Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Mean here. Today we're going to talk about a particular build I've been working on. This is one of a few uh, Magus slash Monk build combos that I've been trying. This one's a little bit different, so let's actually pause the game real quick so you can see what I've done here. So this is a Sensei Sword Saint build. So this is a subclass of Monk, and the Sword Saint would be a subclass of Magus. The reason for this build is a couple of reasons. One, by two levels of Sensei, we actually get an ability, Insightful Strike. Insightful Strike basically allows you to replace your attack roll increases thanks to strength or dexterity and replace it with a high wisdom score. So basically if you, you're used to weapon finesse where you're using melee weapons that are weapon finessable and you have a high dex, it rolls with your dex bonus instead of your strength bonus assuming it's higher. It's the same general principle. If your wisdom bonus is higher, it replaces these two. But only, and this is the real downside here, if unarmed strikes or monk weapons and a lot of people confuse this monk proficiencies with monk weapons just because a monk can use the weapon does not make it a monk weapon if you see uh, the list that you have here for monk proficiencies in that list so far the only ones that I've been able to validate as being quote unquote monk special weapon quality is comma psi quarterstaff and that's it I haven't found nunchakus uh, I've never seen a shuriken in the game, and I've never been able to get a singham, whatever the hell that is. Maybe they'd work on those three, and maybe that's it. Uh, we don't want to use quarterstaff because it's two-handed. Size and commas then, and unarmed strikes, of course, do work. Um, and we have unarmed strike we get naturally for being a level one monk, so there's that. So I'm like, well, I want a weapon that's not just my unarmed fist, since I'm not really leveling the fists up. Weapons we can upgrade. Uh, so I thought, let's go comma. That does more damage than the Psy. The Psy does one to four uh, piercing damage. And again, it's a different damage type than your fist, so that's another reason for going a weapon build. Uh, but you could just as easily have taken this unarmed and have a lot of fun with it. Um, show, uh, show you in brief the feats that we have. Uh, weapon focus comma came from being a, a first level dip into Sword Saint. You have to pick a weapon. This is the one I picked. So get weapon focus for free. From there, I went with dodge. This is basically an armored build. This is basically uh, with no uh, gear on you except for maybe nunk robes. This is going to be rocking well over 30 for your armor class after everything's said and done. Uh, extra arcane pool because you're going to burn through those pretty quickly. That's how you enhance your weapons, whether it be your fist or your comma. Um, improved unarmed arm strikes we get for free for being a level 1 monk. Same with stunning fist. Now we get into some interesting picks. Crane style, crane wing, and crane repost are amazing. Not only do they give you a lot of armor class for it, but there's a penalty for you using uh, fighting defensively, a minus four penalty. If you get three points in mobility, which I have, you get a, a plus three to your dodge while this is on instead of the plus two, but you still get that minus four penalty to your swings, which really sucks. Crane style, crane wing, and crane repost help uh, decrease that penalty eventually down to minus one instead of minus four. Definitely worth having, and they give you more armor class as you do it. So totally worth having on this type of a build. Um, from there, deflect arrows while you're going to have a high armor class. So long as uh, you are not caught flat-footed, you have a really, really good armor class. So the chances arrows are going to hit you are pretty low. Um, but when, when one does get through, having deflect arrows pretty much negating that attack. Again, as long as I'm not flat-footed, the very first arrow that should hit me, it's gone. So that's a nice little bonus, I think. And you're going to get shot at quite a bit in this game. Crushing Blow is kind of a judgment. Uh, it lowers your armor class based on your Wisdom score. You're basically trading out a Stunning Strike for a Crushing Blow. Uh, so a one-to-one -one parallel there. I don't know that if it's worth it. Uh, there's uh, an ability that you get to enhance your weapons later on called Brilliant Energy, which is a pretty big hit to your attack bonus for your weapon. But... It allows you to negate their armor and their shield bonus of your target. Pretty nice ability. Comes up late in the game, so maybe Crushing Blow early is probably the way to go. But again, I could see swapping that out for something else. We went straight up Blind Fighter here, you know, with a monk theme. I went Blind Fight, uh, Improved Blind Fight, and Greater Blind Fight. Don't know if that's necessary to go that high, but I've never tried it, so I figured I'd give it a shot. We went Weapon Specialization and Greater Weapon Specialization, so we can get extra damage with our comma plus 2 and another plus 2 make a plus 4. So pretty good damage, uh, even with a low strength. That's still pretty good. If I need to penetrate some damage resistance, uh, I could switch to uh, Pinch Hit 
back to a unarmed striker and use pummeling style to help capitalize on that. That's a possibility. Uh, from there, uh, penetrating strikes to ignore some damage. Uh, and this is only working with the weapon focus ability, so that's our comma. So if I were to lose something like, say, crushing blow for something else, I'd probably go weapon focus on arm strike on this build. Because between that weapon focus and the weapon focus for my comma, penetrating strike would work on both, is what I'm seeing here. I haven't tested it, but that would be what I'm reading here. And if that works, that would actually be pretty good. Um, improved initiative, again, is not necessary. Uh, but I do like being able to hit earlier in combat, so that's kind of the reason for it. This uh, uh, dip into Sword Saint, or dips, give me the spread into Sword Saint, really has a good way to capitalize on that. There's a lot of good things that you're going to get built into both of these classes. Even two level dip into Sensei is pretty amazing. Uh, we don't get Flurry of Blows. That's the only monk class that doesn't get it here, Sensei. But we do get Inspire Courage. It allows us to basically, like a, a bard, buff ourselves as well as our teammates for plus one for attack bonus plus one for damage and a couple other little fiddly bits but uh definitely a good bump not something i'm going to invest a lot of feats into but it's there and might as well use it when you really need to push yourself up and over the top why not uh, from there of course remember we get our spell combat and our uh, spell strike ability for being a magus allows me to cast touch attacks through my weapon or my fists uh, melee touch attacks of course which is good because my melee touch attacks are going to be suffering because they do not get a plus five wisdom bonus. They will go off of strength uh, because it's not considered quote unquote a monk weapon. Right? Uh, perfect strike. And these ones are kind of like, I don't really know why they even have these things, but some of these are actually not that bad. Um, let's see. The ability to upgrade our weapon, of course, now my fist or my comma can do flame damage, frost damage or shock damage. I can make it keen. But sadly, with all the monk abilities, uh, monk weapons, they all seem to have a times two um, modifier when they crit and a natural 20 to hit. And that's all they seem to get, which is kind of lame sauce. But to do what I want with this build for the extra armor, can you defense? While you wielding your chosen weapon, we get a, a, a bonus to our armor class based off of our intelligence bonus. So I'm getting a plus three from wielding that comma. Um, could I have picked something else like a rapier? Sure, but then uh, we have problems with our monk abilities not really working properly uh, if we're using a different weapon, which is kind of sucky. Uh, we get our monk standard wisdom bonus for armor class, which is amazing. Um, really going to be nice for us to, to put that through the roof. Uh, this insightful strike is the other problem. Uh, while it's nice that I get a high wisdom, so high armor, then I also get my high attack bonus because of this. It is limiting me to unarmed strikes as well as monk weapons. And again, that's where we fall back in our problem with this particular build. I'm not saying it's horrible. Uh, the reason you usually go Magus is because you want to crit through your weapon. So that's probably not going to be a thing for me. Uh, but uh, I'm almost okay with this. A couple other things that really stick out for this build, though. Fighter training is amazing. Uh, there's a lot of feats that are locked under a wall of you know, how, what level fighter you are. Since we're not a fighter, this class of Magus, all the Magus classes, as a matter of fact, get a fighter training feat like this for free, and you get high enough to it, and basically for the other ones, they get like half progression. So whatever level of uh, Magus they are, half of that counts as fighter level for purposes of purchasing feats. In this particular case for Sword Saints, they actually take their fighter level, or their Sword Saint level, excuse me, subtract three from it, and that's what quote-unquote fighter level they're considered being for feats. And that's important because there's going to be feats in here that you have to be a fighter level 4 before you to be able to get it. A fighter level 8 or 6 or 12 before you can unlock it. And that means unless you're going fighter, this is one of the few ways you can actually get it and still be the class that you want to be. So it's a really nice uh, feature here. Uh, also, uh, Lightning Draw, a really nice little free upgrade that you get for being a Sword Saint applying your intelligence modifier as well as your dex modifier to your initiative rolls. One of the reasons why I could see improved initiative not necessarily being needed because I'm already rocking a plus five to my roll because of my dex and intelligence and that's only going to go up as I find gear to enhance those abilities. Uh, there's like one or two others. Uh, this one right here, Critical Perfection. While I'm not particularly a big fan of the... Uh, fan. I don't particularly care about adding my intelligence bonus on a critical hit confirmation 
to see if I crit, and that's always good. Um, it's this last part that's important here. This also gives our Sword Saint the ability to basically replace his base attack bonus with his level of Magus only for purposes of qualifying for certain feats. And again, much like that fighter feats, there's going to be ones where your bab has to be 15 for you to be able to pick them. I want to say like greater weapon specialization might be one, or penetrating strikes might be one. It could be greater blind fight, I doubt it. But one of these is like you have to have a really, really high bab. Well, my bab is only 15, and that's at the very end. So to actually get the feats that I want, then having that ability that uh, gives me a fake bab score for the purposes of purchasing that feat come in super handy. And there's other stuff in here that certainly makes this class far superior, in my opinion, to, to a straight-up fighter, a straight-up monk, a straight-up sword saint. The, the cross-dipping is extremely helpful, but the ability to enchant your weapons in various ways is going to be extremely useful. Greater spell combat, improved spell combat, so I can cast my spells in combat and not really worry about it. It's going to be helpful. Uh, I think that this is going to be a really fun soloing, uh, if not team-friendly, build. Uh, with that, after everything's said and done, you'll see that my strength capped out at 13 is the last point I invested. Uh, I put one more point in intelligence from 15 to 16 to early on to get more skill points. And then the other uh, three points I put into wisdom from 17 up to 20 to pump that as high as possible because that really is affecting not only my armor class but my attack bonus as well. From there, the one uh, last real point to make before we get out of here is this. You see how my armor class doesn't look particularly stellar, even as a level 20 character. Remember, I'm naked in the breeze wearing nothing but robes right now. Uh, some of these abilities are not being modified yet because we're not in combat. But if you just hover over them and see what we're talking about, not only is my armor class, but my touch armor class both the same number. So that's important. Notice how I'm getting a plus 5 armor class bonus. That's because of my wisdom. A dexterity bonus, obvious. My candy defense bonus for dodge, that's for my intelligence bonus. So I have three stats that are increasing my armor class right now. If I get gear that increases those three stats, and there's a piece of gear out there that does that, two pieces, one that will increase your physical stats, plus eight, one that will increase your mental stats, plus eight, that would add a plus four bonus three times to my armor class. So instead of four, we're talking about plus 12. So a 22 armor class will jump up to 34 for touch attack or armor class. For flat-footed, not so much. That's only really my wisdom that's going to benefit from that. But again, a plus four to that will turn that from a 16 to a 20, and that's only when I'm surprised or flat-footed, so to speak. So there's other things that I'll get for gear that will increase those uh, armor classes. Uh, rings of deflection, for instance, abrasives of armor class, natural armor amulets will play a part in some of this. But I can rock a pretty respective armor class after everything's said and done. And that's even before I cast a spell or two to increase the chances of them just straight up missing me. Looking right at you, you know, for blur or um, displacement. Those are a 20 or a 50% chance to miss me just out off the bat. It's kind of nice. The fact that I'm a monk, I can wear the monk robes that lawful good monks wear that are like a plus 5 to your dodge. That'll just put that dodge and dodge stacks in this game, which is nice. So you can jump that armor class up by significant amounts. So after everything is said and done, like I said, I think this will be a pretty good soloing build. With that, though, my name is Brother Mutant. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. I've been trying to keep the videos a little more succinct. And yes, I'm not showing you any battle because the only real battles that we have are ones where uh, we're fighting like uh, uh, low-level guys like this. You guys need to stick your butt right there. Together we stand. Uh, I could show you one quick fight, and I can actually show you one quick glitch of the game. I have been finding all kinds of glitches lately. So there's this spell called Stone Fist, and what I thought it would do would, if you don't have unarmed strike, uh, improved unarmed strike ability, which I do because I'm a monk, uh, I would assume it would basically give it to you, because that's what it seems like it's doing. You don't uh, provoke attacks of opportunity, and you deal damage equivalent to what a monk does at level 1. 1d6 for a normal sized person. 1d4 if you're small. So, I activate this spell, cast it, and now, if you see, we switch, I have two attacks. Notice how I'm not getting an attack bonus from Wisdom. I'm getting a strength bonus. So this literally is different. But notice something else. 
it's a two foot touch attack and it really is it actually behaves just like a touch attack so watch this when I go into combat fight these guys you'll actually see in the combat log that instead of swinging for armor I'm swinging like it's a, a an unarmed opponent because it's a touch attack move at this point which is a little trippy come on get your swing on kid alright here we go so here's our first here uh, hit and as you see here his armor class is 13 based off of touch he has his 10, his dex bonus, and deflection because of the spell that was just cast on him and his teammates. And that's it. So his armor, which is probably nothing more than padded or leather, not the point, is being ignored completely because this is a touch attack move at this point. And while that doesn't seem like that big a deal, watch this part. I have my spell strike on and my spell combat on. Uh, I got some defenses going on here, but let's actually hit this guy for some shocking grasp, right? It'll do shocking grass damage. I'll cast a spell. It'll go through my weapon thanks to spell strike. And my weapon in this case is my punching fist. And watch what actually happens. This is definitely a glitch I gotta believe in the system. Cast my spell and then discharge it. Boom. Look what happened. Not only did I hit him for bludgeoning damage for the stone fist, which is fine. Here's his shocking damage. But here's shocking damage again. So I literally cast one spell and did two, point, uh, two different spell worths of the damage on the guy. This works for not only uh, Shock and Grasp, but Corrosive Touch. Touch of Fatigue, even though it doesn't do quote-unquote damage, it lowers their Strength and Dex once. Uh, and there, you'll notice it because in, instead of damage, you'll see you'll have a Fortitude save. You'll see two of them. They could fail one and save the other, doesn't matter. As long as they fail at least one of them, boom, he has minus two of his Strength, minus two to his Dex. It's kind of trippy. And then it even works with Frigid Touch and Vampiric Touch, which is amazing damage and gives you some health in the process even if it's temp hit points it's kind of weird and i think it's because of that stone fist i'm not sure why but it literally is applying the touch attack two times here so until they fix that feel free to exploit that to your guys' heart's content that's one of the fewer glitches that i found most recently while testing these builds out and again i don't know why it's doing it but it definitely is an error uh, so you gotta assume they're gonna fix that eventually but until that time, I'm going to capitalize on it. Other than that, like I said, I have a variety of spells to pick from, damage types to choose. Also, just to point out, Stone Fist is weird in that you can't buff your weapon because it's not a weapon anymore. If I were to buff my weapon using this ability, uh, Stone Fist, while it still will say that it's on my character because it's you know one minute per caster level, you won't get the effects of Stone Skin anymore. You'll go back to having uh, Unarmed Fists. I don't know again what's that about it's like overriding it and again i'm fine with that because that seems to be exploitative anyway um i was kind of hoping that uh, without going monk i could actually take the stone fist spell activate it and then buff up my quote unquote stone fist and like use that as weapons for damage but it, it, it won't do that so uh and again i'm fine with that it just seemed weird that it gave me this double hit thing of going on the fact that of course it was a touch attack which I'd never realized before today. Uh, I thought that was definitely something worth mentioning to you guys. But again, with that, my name's Brother Me. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. How would you have picked your feats differently? How would your point stats been redistributed? Should I have made it a strength-based build? You guys tell me down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.